What is sound? Or what is music? Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini, and for our unit on energy transfers and sound, today we're going to explore sound. More specifically, we're going to identify how sounds are made, describe how sound waves transfer energy, and we're going to focus on loud and quiet sounds. But what is sound, really? If we think about sound, there are many words that come to our mind, including music, noise, voice. You can think about musical instruments like the piano, for instance, or a guitar. You can think about composers. Um, but let's really look at what is the definition of sound from the point of view of physics. And I think there's no better person to explain to us than Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And as you can see, Mozart is telling us that sound is a wave produced by vibration of molecules. And as you can see, in this sentence, there are three key words we need to understand. The first one is molecules. As you know, everything around us, including the air we breathe, is made of tiny invisible particles called molecules and in a gas like air these molecules are free to move around they zoom at high speed they bounce against different surfaces etc and but what is really important from the point of view of sound is this idea of vibration it's really vibration that puts everything in motion and let's think about our voices now, as we speak, you can put two fingers here at, uh, uh, here at your throat, and as you speak, you can feel some vibration. And you know that vibration comes from the air that goes through your vocal cords, your voice box, so to speak. And this is where voice is originated. But at the same time, you have to think, okay, voice starts here, but how does it reach? the microphone on my laptop, which then eventually is turned into electric signal that goes into the loudspeakers or the headphones through which you're right now hearing this lesson. What happens is that this vibration that starts here gets transferred to the molecules of air. So they start vibrate. It's not the actual air that from me gets over there. It's the vibration that travels in every direction at, not surprisingly, the speed of sound and eventually reaches you. So every time we want to make a sound, we need to hit something. We need to move something. We need to start a vibration. And this is true also when you play the piano. Today, I really want to focus on the sound of music. Now, the sound of music uh, can be defined by three main parameters. Loudness, pitch, and quality. And I want to demonstrate these three quantities. Then in class, we're going to see also how we can measure. But let's start with loudness. Now, loudness tells you uh, how strong your sound is. For instance, I'm now playing the same note. And as you notice, in the second time, it came out louder. And how did I accomplish that? By hitting the key stronger. So if I'm very soft, it will come out a barely audible sound. And if I do like this, the same note will come out louder. And this is related to what we call the amplitude, okay? And it's the same difference uh, with your voice if you oh, if you shout, again, this is the amplitude. The second part, the second parameter by which you can uh, define um, um, sound, the sound of music is the pitch. And this is related to the frequency. And as you can, as you know, if you have a keyboard of a piano, for instance, if you go on your far left, 
you hear this kind of sound, if you go on the far right, they take the same note, okay? Yes, this one, yes. Or even a bit closer. The difference here is really the pitch. If you go on the left side of your piano, you get a lower, a lower pitch. And if you go on the right side of a keyboard, you'll see you'll have a higher pitch. Now, this is related to something which is physical. And for instance, if you have a guitar, you know that some of the strings of the guitar are thicker and some are thinner. Thicker strings will make a lower pitch and the thinner strings will make a higher pitch. Not only, it also depends where you're keeping your hand, where you're sort of decreasing or increasing the length of the string which is vibrating. A longer string make a lower sound, a shorter string will make a higher sound. The same goes for the piano, especially if you have a grand piano, you know that grand piano is not, um, the strings are not the same uh, size, they're not the same length. Longer strings, which are on the left side of the piano, will make the lower notes, and the shorter strings will make the higher notes. And this is more or less true for every musical instrument. If you talk about a wind instrument, in that case, is the length of the column of air which is vibrating. For instance, those instruments may make a very low sound. Usually they have a lot of loops and turns inside, okay? Well, a very short in wind instrument will make usually high-pitched sounds. The final parameter we have to consider is what we call the quality or tone. And that is really related on the shape of the sound wave you're making. Why? Because when you're hearing a sound, most likely you're going to be able to tell what made that sound. Is it a voice? Is it a guitar? Is it a car horn? Is it a piano? And even if these sounds have exactly the same loudness, exactly the same frequency, okay, you can still tell this is a piano, this is a voice, this is a violin, this is a car horn. Why? That's the quality. The quality of a sound will tell immediately you're hearing a piano or you're hearing someone singing. In the next lesson, we're going to see how these three uh, things are... As I was saying before being interrupted, unfortunately I had to change room. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to see how a uh, different sound looks for, look from the point of a wave. So looking at sound waves will be more easy to understand what is the loudness, that is the amplitude, the pitch and the frequency and the quality. But today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarini.